Hey, how's it going? Mr. Bill here and welcome to part two of the Splice YouTube Creator Series. So in part one, we looked at um, creating a sound and then resampling it into multiple channels and creating some kind of crazy um, bass sounds out of it. And in part two, we're going to talk about more of what I would do with those bass sounds afterwards. So like I said, I would render them all to audio and then what I've done here is I've kind of cut all the audio up and then affected it in different ways. And I'm just going to play through what I what I made here. This is the dropping chlorine and you'll hear after listening to those basses um, in the last video that, that, that this is exactly where they came from and this is how they were made and this is how it was all arranged and stuff like that. So I'll just play this for you now. So you can hear all those little articulations through there of all the all the crazy bass stuff. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how, how I articulate it. So uh, usually I just create an audio channel and then I go to do my toolbox, which I'll talk about in video three. And then here I have all the bases that I made. <laughs> They sound like that, which is pretty cool. And then, um, and then I simply drop them onto the uh, onto the channel, and then I start just editing them. So uh, I always turn warping off, and I probably might need to turn these down a little bit. So even that, like, it almost sounds like the initial bass that was there. That boom, boom, that first little boom, boom. There's a good chance that I actually just got it straight from here. Or even perhaps maybe I took this part and reversed it so the movement was backwards or something. Uh, so yeah, basically the idea is that I, that I just arranged the sound like that. And I use this thing called the placeholder sometimes. So let's say I wanted just to hit here. So I want the, the sound to go for, what's that, um, 16, I guess that's like, uh, not quite half of it, or actually turn triplets off, it's like a quarter of a bar, that's how long I wanted the sound to go for. Uh, and then I have this thing in my toolbox again, which I'll talk about in video three, called the placeholder. And what I can do now is I can just drag this last playhead out, and then I can just mess with the first one like this. And you can see that it's just scrubbing through the audio file there, which is kind of nice. And now I can just find a hit that I like. Okay, so that's cool, but the movement needs to suit the beat. So now what we do is we just scroll through until we find a part where it actually sits with the beat the best. So you want, um, I'll turn the grid down. We kind of want this hit, this womp, hitting on uh, the, the eighth note or the whatever you want to call it. So it's like... Like that, so boom, womp. And then also I'd art articulate it with fades and stuff like that, so stuff like this. So that's a good first hit. Um, actually, I might keep my placeholder handy because I'll probably use it again. And then we need to go back to uh, the live stream bases, which are here, and then chuck them, chuck a new one in, unwarp it, and probably turn it down a little bit. How much is this? This turned down by six, so yeah, that should work. So even just that initial sound is kind of a bit of a beast. Uh, we can fade this around like this. And maybe less. So might have to use the detune control down here. And we probably want to have this hitting on the triplet just here. So and then maybe just a, a nice big solid hit here. So let's, uh, that file probably doesn't have one in it. 
Probably this file might have something in it somewhere, so let's see. Even just that harmonic at the start could be cool. So. So you get the idea anyway, that's that's the idea of cutting all this all of the bases up. And eventually hopefully you'll get something like this, which sounds and then there's a bunch of synths here that also layer over the top to kind of fill it out a bit more. And then together they sound like this. And also to fill it out a little bit more, I've done a bunch of effects stuff on this Neurotex uh, channel. So you can see there's like a resonator here that that turns up and as it turns up, uh, the gain of it goes up also. So it kind of adds this like chord tail to the end of this hit. And you can hear it kind of pitches down or it sounds like there. Yeah, and then there's like another hit here. This hit here has, um, uh, I think this flanger here, which is made by Ubik turns on just for that single hit. So let's hear it without that. So, it just adds like a tiny bit more to it and then so you get the idea it's just basically a bunch of effects and cutting up those neuro bass sounds that i made before and then layering it with some synths uh and then what i've done after that that's phase one and then phase two is i render all of this stuff down into a single channel uh and then that single channel becomes uh basically it's just a little bit of filter just a filter on it to clean some low end up that might have been a problem um, and then I've just edited it a lot, like cut it up and, uh, and you can just see that there's like a lot more articulation with the fades and it ends up sounding like this. Like for instance, this hit here, I'm maybe turned up because it was too quiet or something. And you can just get much more articulation with the volumes rather than using compressors. You can just like cut the clips up and use, um, use the volume control and fades and stuff to articulate. Uh, exactly how you want things to to ha how like exactly what dynamics you want every single hit and sound to have in the program so uh, phase two sounds like this <laughs> and phase one sounds like this <laughs> So I don't know if you can notice, but basically I, I just hear like a little bit more cleanliness in the second phase. And also it's just, there's a little bit more to it. Like it's not that much that it's different. It's just, there's just more and it just sounds a little bit more interesting. So yeah. And then obviously the final version ended up sounding, oh, I'll turn these, I just have these mastering, like quick mastering limiter things on just so it sounds okay. Um, so it's not too quiet for you guys. And yeah, basically the final just sounds like this. So yeah, um, hopefully you have more of an understanding of resampling and audio editing and man manipulation and kind of articulating pieces of audio a bit better using the placeholder and fades and editing and volume uh, changes and like using the transpose control and just all these real simple things in Ableton that, that can be kind of like combined to to make interesting music and it's just an interesting production technique that I seem to use a lot and that's why I'm sharing it with you so yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you in part three.